So we go back to our desks and we start trying to think about how do we add trust to the system? People all throughout the company are starting to really ask for some way of auditing that the database that we had yesterday is the same as today. And if this sort of situation occurs, then we can't be modifying this. What we should have done in a project is had another DB and some sort of tag, even if that was a commit ID, and then have that hashed. So, so this never happens. We want all systems throughout the company to be notified of this situation, and each of them can then take their particular way of correcting it. Hiding it was no good. So we start to think about well, what are some of the things that we can do to be able to allow people to validate that um, the database hasn't changed. That, in other words, all we can ever really do is append the database. So we start thinking, and we, we come up with a couple of solutions. All right. The first thing is we've got to make the database, design the database in a way where it can be audited. That there is an absolute guarantee that the data we wrote is the same and that the data throughout the entire database is properly kind of connected to each other. And we can actually do this if we just change or add, I should say, a few extra fields to our database. So we had the name and the hash. That worked. But I'm going to add a couple more fields here. I'm going to add a record number, so some unique record number. I'm also going to add a field called previous hash. And then I'm going to have our name and then the hash that we had. And then how is this going to work? Well, let's go back to our project. The very first um, dependency we had there was the UUID package, right? It, let's say some tag. So what we're going to do is say, fine, the first record in our database was for UUID. And let's say that we're, we're, we've got tags that are actually even just versioned, right? Maybe that's version 1.0. And we did create some sort of hash, sorry, created some hash based on those bytes like we talked about before. There we go. Now, I haven't put anything in the previous hash because I want to talk about that now at the next record. So now we want to add record number two. This was the DB package, maybe at 1.3. And we were able to produce a hash for that, right? How can we leverage this previous hash field to create something that's auditable. Well, since this is record number one, there's no previous. So what we're going to do is just set this up as hash zero. right? There's no previous. And then what I'm going to do here is this. When I write record number two, I'm going to take another hash of record one. Maybe we can still use SHA-256. We're going to take this data that's static, I'm going to do another hash, and I'm going to end up with something else now, right? Some unique hash, which represents these four pieces of information. What I've just done is I've chained, I've chained these two records together. And we can continue to do this, right? Record number three. Maybe this is some sort of uh, GraphQL package at 2.4, and it's going to have a hash, right? And then what we'll do is we'll take a hash of these four pieces of information. And we'll write that. Now this change, change, uh, change those two pieces. And if we do it one more time, number four, maybe um, what we're now going to bring in is some sort of JSON package at like 3.7. And the code for that here is that. And then we'll hash this again. And I don't know, like I'm just randomly putting up letters here, LD1, 
five, six, A, right? But we have that. Now that chains this together. So look at what we've done here. All right? Each one of these records in the database contain information about the previous record. And we're doing that through this idea of a hash. Now, what's nice about doing this is we now have a database that can be audited, right? How? OK, imagine this. Imagine I did decide to now go in and change the UUID package, right? I have different code for version 1.0. Because the, the developer, what they did is they untagged it, changed some code, retagged it, and now this isn't the hash that we get. We're able to detect that. That's beautiful. That's what this system is for, to detect that. But once again, I go in and I change that value to match the new. Now, if we run an audit against this database, we're going to know that something was mutated. How are we going to know that? Because look, if I go to record two, I have a hash. In fact, I did this really bad, didn't I? Now that I think about it, uh, well, not, not really. It's all fine. It's all good. But think about this. Look, if I go to record two, record two says the hash of record one should look like this. Now, I run a hash on this data. Am I going to get this? Not anymore because I changed some bytes. We now know that, bare minimum here, something's changed with record one. We know there's a mutation. We know there's a mutation. That's how we can do this audit. We could walk through every record validating the previous hash. And if at any time this hash doesn't match that data, this hash doesn't match that data, this hash doesn't match that data, we know somebody went in and did a mutation. Pretty cool. We now have the ability, by just adding these two fields, to give somebody the ability to audit the database. We could point the CLI tool to this and say, run an audit. And we would now know that somebody did some, some fun stuff to the database. Pretty good, right? Then you might say, OK, Bill, this is great. We have the ability to now do an audit in the data because these hashes would have to be changed if anything changed. But, you know, Bill, you still kind of own the database in a sense. There's no real transparency here because, Bill, you know about the audit trail. So, Bill, I know that if you change this value, you're just going to go in and change this value which means you're going to change this value, which means you're going to change this value. And you're just going to go in and mutate the audit trail anyway. So again, since you are the one that just has this single instance of the database, I love what you did, Bill, but you really haven't completely solved the problem because you're the one that has this sort of only copy. So, for this to work, for us to really have this true audit trail, there's got to be more transparency. In other words, you can't be the only one that owns the database. We've got to come up with a way of um, making sure that there isn't just one owner of the database. So Bill, we've got we to now also solve that problem next.